Hello dear students welcome to your online classes I am Mrs Snehal Murey and I heartily welcome you today Today we are going to learn chapter 2 of standard 7th history and the chapter's name new kings and kingdoms part 2 part 1 we already studied in the last video Now let's quickly revise the key points which we studied in the last video In the last video we have discussed the three main points they are first the emergence of new dynasty next how administration was carried out in the kingdoms and the third prashastis and the land grants these three points we discussed in detail in the last video now let's begin with a new point and that is warfare for wealth I repeat again warfare for wealth why was it necessary for the kings to fight against each other and conquer the other regions let's study it the ruling dynasties had their specific regions to rule but at the same time they tried to control other areas also what was the reason behind it because to increase their power to acquire more wealth and to capture the resources etc next we have three examples of warfare for wealth one of it is triparite struggle for kanauj next attack of mohammad ghazni and the third one prithviraj 3 versus mohammad ghori Now let's study these in detail. First one, triparite struggle of Kanauj. Can you observe in the map, dear children? Where can you find Kanauj? See, this is a Kanauj triangle. See, can you see here? Kanauj was very important and prosperous city in Ganga Valley. Kanauj was very important and prosperous city in the Ganga Valley. rulers belonging to gurjara pratihara rashtrakuta and pala dynasty fought to have control over kanauj why they fought to have the control over kanauj because kanauj was very prosperous city as it was lying on the ganga valley and historians often describe it as a triparite struggle of kanauj why tri tri means three that means gurjara pratihara rashtrakuta and the pala dynasty these three dynasty always fought for the control over the kanauj because it was a prosperous city and they can have immense wealth and resources from that city okay this is one uh, example why the wars were happening in the previous period next the attacks of ghazni and gauri rulers now this is a, a portrait or a picture of ghazni rulers demonstrated their powers and resources by building large temples now today if people have to demonstrate their wealth what they'll do they'll uh, build a big house Uh, purchase expensive cars but in those periods what the king used to do to show their power and to show their wealth they used to build a huge large temples and there was immense wealth in that temples therefore those temples were often attacked therefore they were always attacked by the invaders therefore they often at the temples to acquire the wealth they often attacked the temples to acquire the well now for example the sultan mohammad of ghazni from afghanistan he ev- every year he used to come to india and attack the temples of india and he used to take immense wealth along with him okay he is an example who always attacked the temples of india sultan mohammad ghazni let's study about him in detail sultan mohammad ghazni he belonged to afghanistan He ruled from nine ninety seven to one zero three zero. That is one thousand thirty. He controlled parts of Central Asia, 
Iran and northwestern part of the subcontinent. He raided subcontinent almost every year. His main targets were wealthy temples. As I said before, every year he used to attack on the India and his main target was the wealthy temples because there was immense wealth over there. Okay, and for example, Somnath Temple of Gujarat. The picture you can see over here is a Somnath Temple of Gujarat. He used to attack there every year. Not every year, but immense every Time he preferred attacking the Somnath temple of Gujarat. Much of the wealth plundered by Ghazni used to create his splendid capital city at the Ghazni. What he used to do with the wealth? He used to take that wealth and he created his splendid capital city at Ghazni. Okay. Next point. Now, Kitab ul Hind book. Sultan Muhammad Ghazni entrusted the scholar named Al-Biruni. Can you see the picture of this man? He is Al-Biruni and he was a scholar. So, what he did, Sultan Ghazni, he requested Al-Biruni to write the record of what he had done in the India. Okay, Because in order to keep the record of his activities and the information of subcontinent, the people he conquered. So, what he requested? He requested Alberini to write a book so that he can keep a record of all the activities and information of the people that he had conquered. So, Alberini wrote a book known as Kitab ul Hind. Can you see this book? It is, uh, it is a book, Kitab ul Hind, and it's written in Arabic language. So, this book is written in Arabic language and it was written by Al-Biruni. Okay, this big book became an important source for the historians. Why it became an important source for the historians? Because historians came to know about the life of Muhammad Ghazni and so it became an important source of the historians to understand the history of the Muhammad Ghazni. Next, the attack of Ghazni and Ghori. Other such rulers who were engaged in the warfare to acquire wealth were Chahamanas, that are Chohans. They ruled around the regions of Delhi and Ajmer. They attempted to expand their control to the west and east for the expansion of wealth. Opposed by the Chalukyas of Gujarat and Garhwal of western Uttar Pradesh. The best known Chamana ruler, Chahamana ruler was Prithviraj III. One more example is there and he was a Chohan ruler and he ruled over the Delhi and Ajmer and his name was Prithviraj III. Now let's learn about him. See, I have uh, shown you the picture of Prithviraj III here. Can you see it? Yes. Prithviraj 3 and also the picture of Muhammad Ghori. So Prithviraj 3, he was born in 1168 and he died at a very early age that is 1192 that is 1192. And Muhammad Ghori, he was born on 1149 and he died on 1200. Okay. Now, let's learn about them in detail. Prithviraj Chauhan versus Muhammad Ghori. Now, Muhammad Ghori attacked over Delhi in 1191. Now, who was ruling over Delhi and Ajmer? Prithviraj Chauhan. And Muhammad Ghori attacked Delhi in 1191. He was defeated by Prithviraj Chauhan. Muhammad Ghori was defeated. At the first time, he was defeated by Prithviraj Chauhan. But he attacked in the very next year. Again in the next year, that is in 1192, he attacked again. And at that time, Prithviraj Chauhan was defeated by Muhammad Ghori. Okay. Why this wars were? These wars were to collect the wealth from the other regions. Okay. Other dynasties. Fine. So, we studied the three examples of the wars which were done to collect the wealth. That is the warfare for wealth. Next, a closer look to the Cholas. Now, 
we are going to study about the cholas kingdom now up till now we studied the kingdoms in the north india now let's come towards the south india from uriyar to tanjavur from uriyar to tanjavur how the cholas kingdom emerged how did the cholas rise to power muthiyar were the samantas in the pallavas kingdom now what is samantas in the last video we have discussed it okay they hold the power in kaveri delta region that is in tanjavur samantas are the people who work under the king okay they help the king in ruling his kingdom so muthiyar was one of the samantas in the pallavas kingdom and he holded a power on the kaveri delta region that is in tanjavur that means muthiyar was ruling over the kaveri delta region in tanjavur now what happened next here how we are learning how the cholas kingdom emerged or rise to the power vijayalaya the founder of cholan empire because of the king vijayalaya the cholas kingdom emerged now let's see how vijayalaya defeated muthiyar now vijayalaya defeated muthiyar and captured tanjavur vijayalaya belonged to a chiefly family of uriyar he belonged to a very high that is a chiefly family of uriyar after the victory over the tanjavur vijayalaya built the town of tanjavur and the temple of goddess nishubhasuddhini there after first he conquered that means he captured the tanjavur and after the victory he built the temple and he also built the town of the tanjavur and the goddess nishubha suddhini there okay he built the temple of the goddess nishubha suddhini there next the closer look the cholas now let's see how the cholas expanded the successors of vijayalayas the successors of vijayalayas conquered the neighboring kingdoms and the regions now after the vijayalaya conquered tanjavur after he conquering the tanjavur his successors that means his sons his grandsons started conquering the neighboring regions now which were the neighboring regions the pallavas in the north and the pandyas in the south see now the pandyan and the pallavan territories were made a part of a chola kingdom now at the first vijayalaya conquered only the tanjavur and after that his successors that means his sons grandsons conquered pallavas in the north and the pandyas in the south further expansion took place under raja raja van he is considered as the most powerful chola ruler again further the expansion of the cholan empire took place under the uh, raja raja van and he is considered as the most powerful chola ruler now let's learn about him see here i have shown you the image of the king raja raja van okay raja raja van became the king in 985 he expanded control over the most of the area he also reorganized the administration of the entire empire he is considered to be the most powerful chola ruler okay now vijayalaya first was the vijayalaya next comes the raja raja van and there was one more another ruler and he is rajendra van rajendra van who was he he was the son of raja raja van okay rajendra van was the son of raja raja van he also continued the policy of expansion and even raided the ganga valley sri lanka and the countries of the southeast asia that means he expanded the kingdom not only in india but also abroad countries that means in the sri lanka and the countries of the southeast asia he credited for the developing of navy for this expansion now in the south you can see uh, it's a uh, we can uh, it was very necessary to develop a navy right so by developing his own navy he conquered not only sri lanka but also the south asian countries okay he is also titled as gangai konda because he expanded his rule up to ganga valley why this rajendra van is known as gangai konda he is titled as gangai konda because he expanded his rule up to the ganga valley
I hope it's clear to you. Okay, now next. Next. Now here we have stopped the part second video. Further, we will discuss the remaining topic in the third video. For today's homework, I like you to ask two questions. First one, explain the rise of Chola Empire in your own words. And the next one, why do you think was Kanuj considered to be a prosperous city? Now, these two points we have discussed in detail. Now, I want you to answer these questions. Okay, thank you dear children. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much.